Where the danger comes in the form of demons, witches, plagues or spirits, people have always turned to all sorts of weird objects to ward off evil. Every religion has its sacred objects, writings and prayers. Every culture has its superstitions, including good luck charms and amulets to thwart everything from daily misfortune and illness to demons and witches. It seems as long as people have been blaming unforeseen evil forces for all the awful things in this world, they've also been crediting magical objects with protecting them from evil. I'm now going to cover various talismans and strange objects that protect you from curses, hauntings and various forms of evil. During the Middle Ages and after, it was believed stuffing a mummified cat into your floorboards or ceiling rafters would protect your house from witchcraft. Many cultures believe cats to be magical creatures who are in touch with the spirit world, so perhaps it's not surprising that after their death they would serve as a metaphysical scarecrow of sorts. Of course, some historians think that the dead cats might have been used as a real scarecrow to warn mice away. During the 16th and 17th centuries, witch bottles were all the rage. They were meant not only to protect the wearer from any evil spells a witch might throw their way, but to reverse the spells, sending them back to the creator. These bottles contained disgusting potions that often include various herbs and human urine. Anyone with bladder issues would boil their urine so that the witch would not only get her own bad juju back, but some brand new bladder infections to deal with as well. Sometimes they would add nails and pins to the bottle of urine to cause their witch antagonistic additional suffering. In Chinese tradition, spirits are believed to only travel in straight lines, so curves can throw them off. They just loop right back around and go back whence they came. Traditional rooftops in China were also topped with statues of mythical guardians and have inscriptions in the tiles to help ward off any wandering evil spirits. Apparently, ghosts lose all common sense in the afterlife, because not only are they suddenly incapable of crossing water, but they'll mistake the colour blue for an entire body of water or even the sky. At least that's what Gullah, descendants of African slaves in the Carolina Low Country believed. Ghost blue is a mixture they concocted to look like water since it's widely believed in many cultures that ghosts cannot cross bodies of water. It's often used to paint porch floors and ceilings throughout the American South. Basically, if you paint the porch blue, ghosts won't be able to get in. They'll think their roof is the sky and they'll try to fly straight up through it. Or they'll think your floor is the ocean and leave. All it took was one priest in the 14th century England claiming he was able to trap the devil in a boot. And suddenly shoes became the golden standard of evil repellent. People began stuffing shoes in random openings wherever they felt evil could slip through like cracks in the walls or floorboards to keep demons and witches away. Witch marks are symbols that ward off evil spirits and witchcraft. In medieval times, it was common to see these marks burned or carved into the floors and entryways of homes. They've even been found in 17th century churches and other structures that were frequented by the superstitious. The markings could include a combination of V's and W's asking the Virgin Mary for protection. Other popular markings include a compass, pentacle or even swirling maze known as a demon trap. The rationale being an evil spirit would follow the deceptive lines and lose their way. An old bit of Scottish lore tells of elf arrows that fell from the sky to be used by the elves and fairy folk. With the arrows, they will kill cattle and humans. Once these enchanted weapons got into human hands though, they become talismans, able to protect humans from witches, demons and the evil eye. It is said that you can't find an elf arrow if you're actually looking for one. However, these mystical objects simply appear when they want to and under most unusual circumstances. As long as they're kept out of the sunlight, they'll remain protective objects. If allowed to reflect the sun's light, though, witches will be able to find them and use them for evil. 
In Japan, it is believed the Oni, or demons and bad spirits, are able to travel into the realm of the living from the northeast direction. Because of this, the northeast corner of a structure is considered a demon gate, or Kimon corner. In order to prevent these evil beings from slipping through, they erect guard towers in the Kimon corner. For major architectural projects, an actual tower would be built in the northeast corner of the structure. In a regular home, this could mean erecting a shrine and keeping anything that produces fire or water away from the corner. Having a bathroom in this corner is thought to be disastrous. Apparently the Oni can travel through plumbing too. Hag stones, or holy stones, are simply rocks that have natural holes in their centre. Throughout Dorset and surrounding southwest England, these stones were carried, worn on chains, or hung over doorways to protect against demons and witches. Since witches were prone to stealing horses for their evil rituals, farmers would hang hag stones up over stable doors as well. In addition to protecting one from evil forces, these stones are also believed to be portals into the fairy realm. Rowan trees are long believed to possess magical qualities. They are prominent in Norse mythology, where they are thought to be the tree from which the first woman was made. The Rowan tree also saved the god Thor, and magical runes are carved in its wood. The berries on the Rowan tree just so happened to be the protective symbol of the five-pointed star on the bottom, and throughout the British Isles, it was believed a Rowan tree would protect the occupants of nearby houses. Pieces of the Rowan were worn for personal protection on the Isle of Man, and crosses made from the Rowan twigs were considered powerful protectors. In Cornwall and Scotland, Rowan twig crosses were bound with red thread and sewn into coat linings. Ancient Egyptians carried around all kinds of protective charms, but they also cast their own spells to ward off evil. In order to perform any magical rite, however, the priest had to be in a state of complete spiritual purity, and he could only use the pure metal or ivory ones adorned with elaborate deities carved into them to scare off any lurking evil. These ones were carved with images of fierce protectors, stabbing, strangling, or biting evil forces, which are represented by snakes and foreigners. These same protectors were also carved into furniture, housewares, and protective amulets. The practice of carrying around a rabbit's foot for good luck dates to around 600 BC in Europe. It's also a common superstition in China, Africa, and the Americas. Traditionally, not just any rabbit's foot would do, at least according to North American folklore, you need the left hind foot of the rabbit captured in a cemetery. This needs to happen during a full moon. As if carrying a disembodied rabbit's foot wasn't grotesque enough, some anthropologists have suggested that a rabbit's foot is actually a substitute for carrying around a piece of human corpse. You're probably familiar with the English saying, if looks could kill. But some cultures take this belief more seriously than others. In fact, belief in the evil eye, a curse delivered by a malevolent or jealous glance, is common around the world even today. In Turkey and other nearby regions, people defend against the evil eye with eye-shaped amulets called nasers. These round glass amulets are designed to look like lidless blue eyeballs. They protect you from meeting harmful gazers with their own unblinking stares. They're always watching. They never blink. Frankly, it's a little creepy. The ancient Romans also believed in the evil eye, but they didn't use Naser to keep it away. Instead, they relied on more characteristically Roman type amulet called the Fascinus. What is the Fascinus, you ask? Well, it's an effigy or amulet that symbolizes the divine phallus. Basically, it's a lucky penis. Some of these amulets even had wings. The theory behind the fascinus is that it ejaculates into the evil eye to ward it away. The Tumi is an ornate ceremonial axe. Today, it is a national symbol of Peru. People commonly hang it on the wall as a symbol of good luck. However, it has a far more grisly history. Tumi were used by the Incans for religious sacrifices. For example, during the annual festival celebrating the sun god, a priest would use a tumi to cut the heart out of the llama and use its entrails to divine the future. 
Tumi were also used for trepanation, an ancient form of surgery that involved removing a piece of skull.